everybody, Jane here, and today we are going to talk about the, Mer the Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne. This is the same guy who wrote Winnie the Pooh, and as far as I know, he has only written one mystery. And it was, it was a pretty good one, okay? So let's start with kind of why I even read this. So I had read Eight Perfect Murders. Um, about six months ago. And one of the things I wanted to do after reading Eight Perfect Murders is to read all of the books mentioned in the blog post that had the Eight Perfect Murders. So this is one of the ones that, according to the blog in that book, contained a perfect murder. Um, if you've read that book, this is the perfect, or this is the murder, and we'll get to this in a second, it's not really a secret. This is the murder where there is one body and then a person missing who is likely to have committed the crime. Okay, so I did a basic review of this book in my recent reads. So if you are looking for something completely spoiler free, I would go over there instead because we're going to have some spoilers. I'm going to talk maybe not super in depth, but we're going to talk about things and I want to just be able to say whatever I want to say. So if you don't like spoilers and just want a very basic like, was this book good? It was, by the way. Was this book pretty good? My recent reads is the place to be. So if you stay, know that there might be some spoilers. Actually, there will be spoilers. Will, will be. All right. So this book is about a man named Antony. And Antony is, I assume he's wealthy because he's just kind of not doing anything. He, he seems to kind of just go from place to place. And I don't, I think maybe job to job, not, not, not anybody who is, um, is settled or professional. And he goes to visit, uh, or he, he's, he goes to visit a friend. That friend is staying at the Red House. And it is, the Red House is owned by a man named Mark. And Antony has never met Mark, but apparently back in the 1920s, which is when this book takes place, you know, your friend is at this house party and you can just show up. Obviously, Anthony's, Anthony's not expecting to, like, stay there at the party or at the, the house. He's just going to go visit his friend, Bill. Antony arrives, and I do believe it is Antony and not Anthony because there is no H in his name anywhere early on. Yes, A-N-T-O-N-Y, Antony. I'm going to call him Anthony. I don't know if it's really Anthony, but Anthony is what we're calling him. So he arrives and Bill is not there. Bill is golfing, but there is a ruckus going on. Kaylee, who is the ranch hand or the, the property manager, I guess. It's not really a ranch. So the property manager is the groundskeeper type thing. He is at he's trying to break in to this locked door. There has been a gunshot and they are concerned because Mark, the owner of the house, was in the room where the shots were fired. He was, we are told, in there with his brother of fairly ill repute. We're told his brother of ill repute, I think his name is Robert, had come to visit from Australia. Mark wasn't particularly happy to see him, didn't really want to see him, but couldn't exactly refuse to see him. And so they are in there now, and Kaylee does not know what happened. They burst through the door, finally, or go, they, 
no, they go through a window because that's a whole thing later, but they couldn't get through the door. So they go through a back window or some, they get in, they get, in, they get in the room and there is a dead body on the floor. And the, um, Kaylee says, this is, this is Robert. It's, it's the brother. He, he identifies the body rolls him over this is this is robert the dead body it, it, the brother so he mark is nowhere to be found and they call the police because they don't know the assumption is that mark has murdered robert and mark has gone into hiding Though, there are some suspicious things, just lots of suspicious things, including um, Anthony noticed that there should have been an easier way to get into the room than the route that they took. <laughs> they they kind of went the long way around from, from the place they can't open the door to uh, another door the way, like, just it didn't seem like a real natural way. So, Anthony is feeling suspicious. The police come, they ask him questions, they ask the household questions, and Anthony is kind of intrigued. He is not a detective, but he really re he reads some Sherlock Holmes and, and is fascinated, and he's kind of like, I don't have anything else to do, so why don't we hang out? I'll hang out with Bill and, and help search for Mark, decide what happened, you know, all that stuff. So him and Bill decide they are going to be um, Watson and Sherlock, and they are going to investigate the murder. And that is exactly what happens. And overall, it was a fun time. This is one of those, like, the house has secret passages type thing. And I just, I really overall I enjoyed it. I, I read it. I want to point out, <laughs> because I think it's important, I rated this a 4 out of 5. Probably it is quality-wise closer in many ways to a 3 out of 5. The writing was rough, and I didn't like it very much. It was kind of choppy, and I think it it does have like that classic literature vibe to it, so it was probably appropriate for the writing at the time. But I found the writing distracting, whereas I don't often find it distracting when I'm reading like a Christie. And her stuff is not much older than this. I think it's a little bit. This was written in the 1920s, and I think her books start like the 1930s, though I could be wrong. So we have these <clears throat> characters who are running around and trying to figure out where Mark is. Why did he kill his brother? Are we sure that the dead person is... Mark, or it's Robert, and not Mark, and because you can't really see the face well, and, and, and Anthony has a sneak in suspicion that, you know, that could be Mark, and the brother could be somewhere. So, uh, this, <laughs> this book, like I said, I did rate it a four out of five. It was a lot of fun. I had a great time with it. I love how very blatantly Anthony and and Bill are just playing Sherlock and Watson, and they, they say they are. They're, they're like, hey, we're, you be Watson, you do the Watson thing for me. And, you know, Bill is the Sherlock, or I'm sorry, Anthony is the Sherlock. Anthony has some kind of photographic memory, so one of the things he does is he will be like, well, I remember this, this thing in the scene, and something, like, I don't know what it is, but, like, I can picture the scene, and then he'll be like, oh, there's a detail. So, as I said, this was a lot of fun. The writing, I didn't necessarily enjoy. It was, it reads like a classic. It's kind of choppy. The writing is maybe not super good as far as actual prose when I say writing, but the story was fine. The characters were fun. I do want to talk a little bit about the resolution of the mystery. I'm going to try to say this without spoiling the actual 
murder in case you would read this. But also saying what I want to say. There is a trope that I really hate in mysteries because it feels unfair to me as a reader. It's unfair in films too, but a little bit less unfair in a film because of the visual elements, if it is done well, than it is unfair in the books where I cannot actually see anything. And where it's just a little unfair. Now, I think in this, this is one of the times it's done really well. There is some one person pretending to be another person. That That is an element of this book. There is a person who learns from actors or is enthralled with actors, and so there, there is that deception. And I generally hate that. I hate in a mystery where it's like, so-and-so is here, but they are dressed as, you know, this other person, you know them as, blah, 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 blah. And I hate that trope generally in mysteries. That trope is in here, but I liked how it was done. I did not have an issue with the way it was done because it was, it was done in a fun way. I did find this a very predictable romance, or not romance, my goodness, a very predictable mystery. I knew pretty much from the start what was going on. I didn't necessarily know the details, but I, I knew I knew the basics. I knew who was dead and who killed them. I just didn't really know the why or all of the how. So for me, the grand reveal was just an explanation of what I already was pretty confident I knew and not some earth shattering, oh my gosh, I never would have guessed that. No, no, I knew that's what was happening. I just didn't know why or how. And those things were, were okay, pretty solid. I will say one disadvantage of the way this is told as opposed to like a Christie because Christie is the closest thing I have to compare this to it definitely again kind of the same time frame and a very similar storytelling style in a lot of ways in a Christie we usually get to meet the person who is killed beforehand to get a feel for who they are in this case because Antony is showing up at at Mark's or I'm sorry at um at, at Mark's house in in this case Antony is showing up at the red house and we already have a dead body and we have what Kaylee has told us is the body of Robert and Mark on the run We've never met these characters. We've never met Robert. We've never met Mark. We only know what other characters tell us about these characters. And I think in some ways that's a little bit of a disadvantage as a reader. I really like to know more so that I can be kind of informed and not just know this is what people had to say about Mark, who's the missing one, or the one that Kaylee tells us is missing, and Robert, the one who we presume is the dead body. So I, I do think there's a slight disadvantage that we never get to meet Robert and Mark prior to the whole story here. It, it kind of, it, it just, and, and Anthony has never met them, n never met either of them. And that's kind of important in the story, I feel like. He's just getting information about who these people are from everybody else in the house, because he's never met either of them. Bill has met Mark, but not Antony. I'm sorry, Bill, <laughs> Bill has met Mark, but not Robert. So, uh, 
Antony does get a lot of information from Bill about who Mark is and, you know, what potential motive he might have and where he might be hiding. And, you know, there are other aspects, too, of this. There are police officers and they are not real competent. I made a note because I, I have a notebook about my thoughts on the book. And in my note, it says the police could have done a thing. And I didn't write what that thing is because I thought I would remember it and I don't. But the police would have done a thing and that would have solved all the problems right away. And they didn't do the thing because the police are incompetent and they have to be incompetent for this book to work. To be fair, that is every cozy mystery ever, it feels like. Because if the cops did their job, our amateur detective wouldn't have to. So apparently there is a thing in this book that had the cops just done question the right person or done the right investigating they would have found out pretty quickly how things had gone because there was some obvious stuff that Antony realizes and goes and finds out so there is that note the cops in this one are failures but we don't see a lot of them and they they don't seem totally incompetent they just there's a couple things that Maybe they're not doing their very best job, but they can't. Otherwise, Antony and Bill will have nothing to investigate. So if you like mysteries, especially like classic mysteries like Christie, if you were a fan of Christie, I would say this is probably a book you'd really enjoy. It is very similar to the Christie's that I love. Again, I didn't think the prose was as good and... It, it reads like a classic, so if you hate classics, this might not be for you. But it was good. And I do agree with the blog in Eight Perfect Murders that this is a murderer that should be there. Because had Antony not come along, and with the level of work the cops were doing, it, it wouldn't have been found out. Like, it, it was... There... There were a lot of a lot of different cool things or weird things in it that it was a pretty good murder. If you're going to murder somebody, the setup for this makes a lot of sense because it it kind of is in some ways like a misdirection. Uh, you have this body and you have the murderer on the run, and so the question isn't who murdered the body, or at least you think the question isn't who murdered the body, it is clearly we know who the murderer is because they're on the run. So the police think their job is just to go find, uh, again, the body is presumably Robert, and the police think their job is just to go find Mark and find out why did he kill his brother. When really we need a detective who's going to make sure that the body is who we think it is and figure out if that's not the case, who it is and, and where their murderer is and, and who their murderer is. So I, I know that was kind of spoilery, I'm sorry. But anyway, it was good. I liked it. I recommend it. If you have read the other books in The Perfect Murders, please suggest what the next one I should read is. I have so far read um, of the eight perfect murder books recommended. I have previously read Strangers on a Train, but I may read it again just for this blog type thing because it's been years. I have already read Death Trap, and now I've read The Red House Mystery. So I currently have ABC Murders from the library and then I bought The Drowning Man? The Drowner, whatever one that was. So I bought that one on my Kindle because I could not find a copy of it anywhere from the library. So I do have some more books to read um, and I do have the list and I think I have Double Indemnity out from the library too. So I am going through those books very slowly. But what was your favorite of The Eight Perfect Murders if you read it? book within there. What one do you think was the closest to a perfect murder? Um, I definitely think that Death Trap was still a little bit better of a murder if you don't want to get caught than this one. Because with Death Trap, 
like, it wasn't something a detective could solve, I think is, is the answer. Whereas with this, the detective can, can solve it. There, there is all the information you need and it is possible to sort through the evidence. So I don't think it, it's quite perfect, but it was very good. All right, guys, if you have comments about the Red House mystery, leave them below. If you want to talk about Eight Perfect Murders and what your favorite murder in that book uh, was, or in that of the blog was, leave that below too. This has been Jane, and I will see you next time. Bye!